Good evening and welcome to the Cancer Education Series brought to you by Mercy One and the Above and Beyond Cancer. Uh, in part, we're sponsored by the Holmes Murphy Foundation. I'm Chris Goodale, the Executive Director of Above and Beyond Cancer, and it's my pleasure this evening to introduce you to Dr. Richard Deming, who is our founder and an oncologist at Mercy One Des Moines. Dr. Deming? Thanks, Chris. This is Dick Deming, and um, sorry I'm not with you video. I honor to introduce our speaker, who is I consider a colleague. I've been working with Liddy Hora for over 10 years. Liddy is an employee of the American Cancer Society, and I have to tell you, there's no organization out there that uh, not only talks the talk, but walks the walk and does more things for cancer survivors and for cancer centers than the American Cancer Society. Uh, it's been my honor to be a volunteer and a volunteer leader at the American Cancer Society since beginning my cancer career 35 years ago. And I just love uh, the organization, love what they do, for those of us who are professionals uh, in cancer care and for cancer patients and their families everywhere. Uh, Liddy grew up here in Iowa. She went to West High in Iowa City, and then she uh, got her bachelor's degree at uh, Iowa State in Ames. For the last 11 years, she's been an employee of the American Cancer Society, and she's what we call a health systems partner. So she is assigned to work with various health systems here in Iowa, including Mercy One and uh, Unity Point. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to my friend and colleague, Liddy Hora. Thank you, Dr. Deming. And thank you so much for inviting me to speak on this group and share a little bit of information on American Cancer Society and the programs and services and how we help cancer patients and those who also help cancer patients in, as, in terms of caregivers. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen, get my video here, just a minute. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, how are we doing? Does everyone see my screen here? Are we good? Yep, we see it. Okay, fine. perfect. It All right, well, I'll go ahead and start advancing it. So as I said, I, I wanna thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I am Liddy Hora, and I'm very available to anyone who's listening to this call. Um, it's, my email is liddy.hora at cancer.org, and I have a cell phone that people call all the time because my role is to be that healthcare partner here in Iowa. I have a colleague, Shelly Walker, who lives on the, the um, eastern side of Iowa, and she is also my colleague that supports the healthcare systems on that side. So the American Cancer Society, we really are work to help taking care of patients and also those people who take care of those cancer patients. Um, we provide patients with those resources that can help improve and even save lives and we're here for everyone to help answer questions and concerns wherever they are and wherever, whenever they need us. I'm gonna move this over here. Oopsie, excuse me. So we work with volunteers at the American Cancer Society and, and other organizations to make sure cancer patients and their caregivers get the support they need when they need it the most. We help patients with their most pressing needs and oftentimes um, provide free rides to cancer treatment, places to stay when their treatment is far away from home. And we're there, thank goodness, to our 24 hours, seven days a week helpline and website that's available. So some of the things that um, ACS has done that has been very impactful to ca cancer patients is that we serve a lot of people throughout the year. Just this past year, we've had 1.42 million annual calls and online chats via our 24 hour, seven days a week helpline. Um, due to COVID, we've really changed not only to chats, but we now have the ability for video chats because we know that 
that brings a, a closer, um, less isolation and more personal contact with those who are needing information. More than 118 million people visit our cancer.org website each year for information and resources and, and support programs. And many of the cancer centers and clinics and patients are probably very familiar with our educational brochures that cancer centers and um, patients oftentimes get when they're having um, cancer experiences on screenings and treatments and diet and all kinds of things that help support patients. Just this past year, we've almost, it's almost like half a million rides have been given annually to about 29,000 patients. And I think one of the golden gems that we have at the American Cancer Society is our Hope Lodge. And if any of you have ever been to a Hope Lodge or seen a Hope Lodge, they are just a, a lovely facility that's a home away from home. We have 30 of the Hope Lodges throughout the United States. We have fortunately one in Iowa City and in, in Omaha, two in Minnesota, um, but they provide the care that patients and their, and their caregivers need when they are traveling for treatment and um, it saves them a tremendous amount of money. Just this past year it was $49 million annually saved for patients who were able to stay at our Hope Lodges. You know the interesting thing about all the thousands of patients that we do help support at American Cancer Society, which is approximately 39,000 with direct services um, and caregivers, 53% of those patients are classified as medically underserved. And that's, that's a very important for that access to care and support through this important time of getting better. You know, one aspect, and Dr. Deming has been a very strong national leader in ACS CAN. And if you're familiar with ACS CAN, it's really our policy end for, with ACS CAN, it's a nonpartisan uh, nonprofit. And in layman's term, it's our policy, it's our lobby group. And it's made up of leaders, but very strong volunteers that really go and help level the, the playing field for cancer patients and caregivers by having legal laws and policies that make access to care and affordable health care doable. Um, and so one of the things through COVID, because we know that cancer has not stopped, um, and neither have we during this COVID, was to do, get patient survey information about the effect of COVID was having on caregivers and, and cancer patients. And those of you watching this probably aren't going to be very surprised at this survey that we did with ACS CAM back in April, and then we did it in May. But what it does is it gives us that hard data that shows that COVID is having a tremendous negative effect on delaying treatment for cancer patients um, because of this pandemic which is, translates into a lot of difficult issues. But you can see back in the, if you look at the gray little dots there, um, back in May, the delay was at 27%, and now it's almost at 80% in May and June of delays, and it breaks it down from radiation and surgery and imaging. But this, this tr truly does translate into information that's critical for us to take back to our lawmakers and, and let them know that there needs to be uh, access to care laws that can help support these cancer patients that are dealing with these astronomical challenges. Um, these delays really transfer, you know, translate into what is not a surprise is that emotional impact that has negativity towards cancer patients. And almost 50% have are very worried have negative feelings about their well-being during covid they worry that um that their cancer may grow be 20 percent say they are worried that they, they grow because of the challenges of just getting into the clinics and getting their care and almost 70 percent of cancer patients are worried about the safety with the social distancing um, so when you look at that the financial impact that COVID-19 is having on cancer patients. It has a tremendous impact of almost 50% of them are having challenges with pain for their care. And a, a, there's a good percentage, 23%, about worrying about losing their, their health insurance. So American Cancer Society is taking this 
and taking this data to the people that can make the changes and help support cancer patients. And that also includes cancer centers so that they're aware of the impact that cancer patients are having. Through COVID, ACS has not stopped the good work that we're doing. And if you go into cancer.org, you will see an incredible hub of information specifically on COVID-19 and the impact it has on cancer patients. And so here's a nice sheet that just sort of gives you a, an outline, but I would encourage you to go there because they've got specific podcasts available, um, what cancer patients and caregivers need to know about COVID, good articles that are daily updated, and, and just a, a tremendous hub of information. A lot of the calls that we're getting and the chats that we're getting at cancer.org at ACS are related to COVID-19, and we're able to have that positive and quick response. Some of the things that have changed with COVID that we are working through is of our 30 Hope Lodges, we had to suspend some of the services right away because our Hope Lodges were not set up to, to help to deal with the, the, the pandemic um, and provide that safety to cancer patients that are at risk and have compromised immune systems. So we are in the process, and we've already opened up several of them, of converting these Hope Lodges to being COVID safe, having um, PPE, the, the plexiglass, and trying to redesign these Hope Lodges so that there is safe social distancing and also testing for COVID. We've used some uh, of our Hope Lodges throughout the United States as if we've converted them to house our healthcare workers that are on the front lines dealing with COVID too, so that they don't have to um, worry about taking the virus back to their family. But more importantly, we continue to provide the update and guidance for cancer patients. And truly, um, the chat features, and we're doing the video chat features that ACS has really been helpful to help reduce that social isolation that so many cancer patients experience. And as I shared before, excuse me, um, the policy, the public policy and advocacy to the cancer community has been very strong through COVID so that our legislators and our leaders understand the, the negative impact and how important it is to help support caregivers, cancer patients, and survivors. Our research continues to continue on through COVID. Just in Iowa here, we have almost $3 million worth of ongoing cancer research being done in Iowa City and um, University of Iowa. And so that is, that is critical to um, supporting and, and helping save lives in this world. So um, let me share a little bit more here. Um, I'm gonna kind of look at my notes here. So when we talk about the cancer lens and, um, and how uh, some of the things that ACS does to help support patients and caregivers, it can be very hard for patients to keep track of all of the information that they get once they're diagnosed and have that treatment. But keeping this or, um, information organized can help them be less stressed and be more prepared to talk to their doctors. So some of you may not be aware that we have um, at ACS, it's called a personal health manager. And it is actually online, available for, at, for free for patients to go on. And it really um, is a great tool that people can take and print off and put it in a binder and take to their, their, um, their doctor's appointments. And it really helps them have a kind of a one place for um, managing their side effects, I, um, notes for talking to the doctor, it has information on life after treatment, templates on um, managing your pain and recording your pain. So this is another tool that is very helpful for a lot of patients um, or as our personal health manager. And I'd encourage you to take a look at that online. The other thing that has really been a benefit to um, a lot of cancer patients and survivors throughout, um, particularly in the world of COVID, when we cannot have the face-to-face -face, um, support and we have to do things virtually, is that we know that cancer patients and their loved ones, they don't have to face this alone. 
And so they can actually go to the American Cancer Society, our Cancer Survivorship Network, and it's a free online community created for and by the people with cancer and their families. This is a wonderful landing site. I've heard so much personal testimonies of people who've been touched by cancer who are living in rural Iowa and they're not, they're feeling isolated and they need to reach out to that person or want to have that person who could connect with what's going on in their life. And they can go to the Cancer Resource or Survivors Network and find those people throughout the United States. Um, I had one woman tell me that she was so excited because at 9 p.m. in the evening, she would go on her computer and link up to another person who had the similar diagnosis in cancer stage in Wisconsin, and they were they become quite quite supportive of each other. And she found this person through the Cancer Survivorship Network. So it it's something that people can have shared experiences, give tips, and really provide that hope to each other in a safe safe environment. So when you go to cancer.org, um, you, you'll see there's a lot of different information, but it is oftentimes the first place that people go to, cancer.org, when they have that first diagnosis, because they know that the American Cancer Society is going to give them reliable information about their treatment, the side effects. They will be able to find out where the programs that they can access and programs that may be nearby that they can, can find. Um, the another thing that's very important about cancer.org, and this is really that access to care and the equity part of what we strive so hard for at ACS, is that we have over 50 languages and translate, translators for people who um, reach out to American Cancer Society that we can help them get the information in, depending on their language. Um, that is extremely valuable and it really um, is used a lot. If you go to cancer.org too, and if you go to the top of the, the a toggle to the top right, you'll see a little icon that's Spanish and everything will be converted into the language of Spanish. So that has been very helpful to so many of the um, people in the United States that English is not their first language. So what can you expect when you call, uh, when you reach out to the, the National Cancer Information Service? We have personal and trained and professional people that are there, as I've said, 24 seven, seven days a week. People can call at 2, p. 2 a.m. on Christmas Eve and they will get someone to talk to them and help them through their um, questions and provide them that support. Um, a lot of different things that come up. Uh, one is health insurance assistance. We have specialists at American Cancer Society that just specialize in health insurance and can help navigate those questions that oftentimes come up. Here's some of the most um, common, some of the more common uh, questions that come out, I'm gonna move my, that, that happen, um, general questions about cancer, as I said, financial, access to care is huge. How do I get there? Is there lodging? Is there a Hope Lodge available? We often say that um, you may have the greatest treatment and uh, cancer center in the world, but if you don't have a ride to get there, it's it's not going to help you. So those are those are really key areas that we um, we at ACS support. Emotional support, as I've shared some of those websites, early detection and screening, um, caregiving. We know that caregivers is a very important role, and they need support end of life questions. And of course, we have a lot of events that go on throughout the American Cancer Society, our Relay for Life, our Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. Uh, we just had a very successful, um, in June, a Coaches versus Cancer event in Des Moines. And so a lot of people reach out and um, get questions on how they can fundraise and, and become a team or help raise money for the American Cancer Society. So we get very good ratings with our uh, National Cancer um, uh, Network because we are there available um, for people. Um, actually, some of our best ratings are for just that emotional support. We have a, a rating of over 95% satisfaction and um, people are very, they know when they go to the American Cancer Society that they're getting reliable, accurate, current information that, um, that can help them through their cancer journey. 
So another area that some people are not probably aware of is the American Cancer Society has a lot of books and information that is available for um, cancer centers, navigators, patients, families. We have over 40 plus titles and you can go to cancer.org bookstores and um, there's children's books, uh, books on how to quit smoking and healthy lifestyles. I myself have about two of their uh, ACS cookbooks, which I really like. They're very healthy and um, tasty. And oftentimes when your people are touched by cancer and going through treatment, their taste and their desire for food is different and they, some foods are not as palatable. So we do have um, recipes that can help through people who are dealing with some different side effects from treatment too very, very popular. And I would encourage you to take a look at that and see if there's something that you might enjoy. So we talk about American Cancer Society. Um, we do care for people who care for people. And one of the things that we're, we realize is the role of the caregiver is so critical to the cancer journey. Um, when someone becomes a caregiver to a loved one, they, are, they have lots of questions and we have really taken notice of that and we are trying to help answer those questions and provide information to the caregiver of what it means to be a caregiver and the perspective of what it means on their loved one going through this and tips on how to care for themselves and how to care for the, the one that they are caring for um, in their new role. This guide also in includes resources to connect other caregivers with others in similar situations and help. So one thing that's really nice about this caregiver guide is you can go online and it, there's a virtual guide, but if someone would like a hard copy guide, they can actually chat through cancer.org or call ACS and we can send you a hard copy. It's a lovely, lovely um, book. And I know uh, Mercy One and Unity Point, their navigators have hard copies of that and they think they, they've, just, they've just said it's an invaluable tool because the caregiver role is so important. So going into more of that caregiver role too, we know that a caregiver goes through an array of different emotions. And so what ACS has done is we have created online caregiver videos that they're kind of those three different buckets of caregiver self-care, physical care, training, and advocacy. These videos are excellent, um, very current. They're a 16-part video series that really offers that social cycle, so, social cycle, um, social, excuse me, social, um, psychosocial, and emotional support for the families. Um, they're evidence-based, and uh, they're very, very helpful. And um, the people that have watch these and use them have expressed that they have really helped them in their role as a caregiver. And um, this, this series has really responded to that need. So I've mentioned a little bit about our Hope Lodge and I'm hoping that if you've never experienced, if you've never heard of the Hope Lodge, please know that they are available. As I said, one in Iowa City and, and uh, we just built one about a, two years ago in Omaha. They are lovely. They are completely free to use. Uh, people refer themselves and to the Hope Lodge. And the usage of them is just amazing. Um, they are typically um, full at uh, most of the time. And um, they really allow that cancer patient to be able to not worry about that lodging, uh, be in a very loving, supporting um, environment, and also really being able to focus on what's most important is just getting well. Um, bottom line for patients too, is that through the American Cancer Society, every year um, we estimate that there's about $49 million um, that is saved by these patients that are able to enjoy and stay at the Hope Lodge instead of having to worry about uh, hotel costs. Here's a location of the Hope Lodges that we have in, throughout the United States. And um, we have future ones in Dallas and Oklahoma City that are on the docket and I think are being built as we speak. So many of you may have heard about our Road to Recovery um, program. And um, that currently is a very robust program and has been in Iowa, it has saved 
thousands and thousands of rides to for the American Cancer Society. Um, currently, through COVID, we have it on pause, our Road to Recovery program. We are still very committed to it, but because of COVID and so many of our volunteer riders, drivers, I should say, are um, elderly, many are retired, many of have been uh, cancer survivors themselves, we are in a position that we don't want to um, endanger or risk our, our volunteer drivers to, um, to be in this situation of giving rides. Now, we are working on some different plans to roll it out so it is safe. I will tell you on a personal note, our drivers in the Des Moines area in Iowa are so committed to helping patients get to their, um, their appointments and their treatment. They have been asking us when they can start and uh, we, so they're, they're, they're looking forward to it, but we're still working through some of the logistics to make sure that each one of those drivers are being safe. And so, and also those that they're picking up. But just to kind of give you an idea, just last year in the United States, we gave nearly 29,000 patients a ride, um, individuals and almost, almost under a half a million rides to treatment. It's a wonderful program. I don't know if I can watch, share a video. Um, Chris, do you think if I play this video, this would work? It's really short. Has yeah, anyone... it should work. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll give it a try and see how I do, okay? okay? Did it work? Well, it was uh, hard to hear. I didn't... Oh, okay. It was hard. We won't do another one then because yeah. you just never know with the Zoom. Right. Okay. And then I would like to share another patient um, support program that some people may not be aware of. Um, it's called our Reach to Recovery. So the Reach to Recovery program has what it does, it connects trained volunteer breast cancer survivors with people facing breast cancer to provide that peer-to-peer -peer support. And boy, has this been a valuable support program, particularly through the world of COVID, because this is one that people email, they call, they make those personal connections. Um, and we try to match those cancer or breast cancer, newly diagnosed breast cancer patients with a person who is in that same demographics and stage of cancer that they, they're in. For instance, if myself, if I were to have breast cancer, it would be someone in my, my age group, someone who had been recently diagnosed and would probably be in a similar stage. So this has been a program that's been around for 50 years actually, and it has served and supported thousands and thousands of women who have been touched by breast cancer, um, actually 1.5 million dealing with um, their diagnosis and their treatment and life after breast cancer. So that is another thing that you can, if you know about or you know someone, a uh, breast cancer patient, and they're looking for that additional support, maybe they're worried about not, not being able to have that face-to-face -face, um, counseling or support group, this would be a great program reached recovery for them to consider participating in. I'm gonna skip that one. And then lastly, one of the things that um, some people are not aware of that I'd like to share with this group is that cancer and cancer treatment, as we all know, have very profound effects um, on a patient's appearance, such as hair loss. And so our TLC, our Tender Loving Care, is a program to help women with their appearance-related side effects. Um, and it, 
we provide them with, um, offer them that variety of affordable wigs and hats and scarves, as well as a full range of mastectomy products. Um, easily accessed it to our TLC catalog. There's a 1-800 number too that people can call to get that personal um, person to help them with the right size and what's appropriate. So we are actually celebrating 25 years um, of the TLC and the support that we have had with our wigs and, and programs. So I just want to thank this group. I, I um, will want to open it up to any questions, but many of you who are listening are probably maybe gone to a relay for life, been a cancer survivor or been a team member. Maybe you've gone to a coaches versus cancer event, or maybe you've just gone online and you've donated to the American Cancer Society. And I just wanna thank you because the American Cancer Society is you. It isn't just, it isn't me, it's everybody. And everything that we do depends on, on, the, on the generosity and the don donations that people give to the American Cancer Society. So I want to thank you for your support and generous, generous donations. And uh, to know that we are here for patients and caregivers uh, with resources, resources to help improve and even save their lives. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're glad that we can be here during those, the, this challenging time of COVID. Um, but thank you very much, and I'll, I'll kind of leave it open to any questions. What do you want? We did have one question. What does sure. a, what ACS uh, research uh, is being done? What, what specific support does ACS provide to research? You know, that's a very good question. Um, a lot of the research that it gets done with American Cancer Society are, are new researchers that haven't been what you might say proven. They're, they're, they're the, the beginning researchers. Um, but I can actually, Chris, get back to you because I, I can give you a whole um, areas of the research that's being done in Iowa because most of it is being done in Iowa oh, yeah. City. And mm -hmm. it's pretty detailed. Um, but I, I can share that with you. I'd rather almost give you a document that could share those that specific researcher information sure. that's going on. One of the things that researchers tell me is that um, they have been so thankful for the American Cancer Society because we invest in that new groundbreaking information where when they go to the government and get government research, they really have to be, have a proven, a proven research case. Um, and so we're kind of that first venting, we're almost like the junior venting of, of seeing if this is really something that can then later on uh, move into the government um, research support. Government kind of doesn't want to have any risk. Sure. <laughs> you might say. And so, so many researchers come back and they said their, their career could not have happened. Um, and some of those groundbreaking information couldn't have happened if we hadn't invested in those new ideas. And really the American Cancer Society, um, besides the government, you know, UI is the number one um, nonprofit that invests in, in cancer research. Wonderful. But I will get, I'll get more specific. Shelly Walker um, is the one who really manages those research grants in Iowa. And I can certainly get the more specifics of what areas we're working on. Yeah, that sounds good. So you've been involved with um, the American Cancer Society for more than a decade. What are some of the most interesting things, developments that you've seen either with ACS or just in the cancer world in general? That's a very good question. Um, probably one of my, some, when I look back on some of the highlights of my almost 11 years of the American Cancer Society, and Des Moines was played a very big part of this, was our Cancer Prevention Study 3. We called it the CPS3. And it is one of the largest cancer prevention or cancer studies that are involved, you know, people in, in, you know, we, we was like 50,000 people that we enrolled in this cancer prevention study that really um, looked at their lifestyle um, and a lot of different parameters of, 
of you know that cancer outcome and that was really a very important um event this was about five years ago because des moines was one of the first communities that participated in the cps3 we actually have a thousand people in des moines that registered to the cps3 and they are now engaged in this long-term 10 to 20 year study um and we you know we get our forms once a year and we get followed and i think that was so important for me as a um, healthcare partner because it was the it was the citizen us really signing up to be part of a, a large scale cancer study knowing that the answers that we we can provide will literally help save lives in the future um, some of the big things that are coming out of the cps3 already after about i think five years i should say and I, it's not going to be a surprise to you chris or dr deming and many of you above and beyond um, uh, supporters is that lifestyle aspect the correlation between eating what we eat and our body weight and you know when i i'll never forget when i signed up for the cps3 they measured my waist you know and they want me to measure my waist every year and just that correlation of our our what we're doing in our body and how we're the exercise and um and how that is really translating in some data to show that it's a healthy lifestyle does reduce cancer I, I think that's very fascinating um the more that we're learning about that i think we all have known it but one of the things about the american cancer Society is we're really providing that data that scientific data that can really then translate to changing laws and changing policies and changing all kinds of things in our world to um, create a healthy healthier lifestyle and ultimately save lives yeah that folds right into our our above and beyond cancer mission statement yes. for sure yes yeah. and you know above and beyond i think um you have done a phenomenal job in highlighting that the cancer survivor and how important that role is the other aspect that i think acs is really on target and has continued to um, study and support and provide is that and i shared in this presentation the caregiver mm -hmm. and how important that caregiver role is um, and i myself it have, was a caregiver i lost my mother and my mother-in-law to cancer and when you're in that caregiver role it's i think that's very very important um and anyone is it's, it's important to the survivor and it's important to a positive income or outcome i should say yeah it really is and and there's so much um so i was going to use the term burden i'm not sure that i i can't come up with a better word that that just and if they if that caregiver can provide can can have access to some good resources like that are available with the American Cancer Society that is just and and to know they're not alone out there I think is also yes. such a very good key yeah That's, the other thing I, I've also enjoyed at ACS um, I feel that our organization we're good conveners we are good partners and when we talk use that word collaboration um, we really do mean it. <laughs> you know, right. some people, it's kind of a loose word that people use. And I feel that um, just even working with you and our public health partners and our cancer centers, it's been a, a positive thing to be a convener and bringing people together. And that also includes those cancer survivors and caregivers. I mean, they are the message. They're the, they're the, they're the stories that we tell. And they're the right. reason why we get up in the morning and we are so passionate for the work that we do it's it's them so Absolutely. once again i think at the end of the day um the the people i have the most respect and um have the greatest impact in, in our work are those people touched by cancer mm -hmm. they, they keep us going right right we did have another follow-up question um, from somebody uh, asking about specific HPV research that the American Cancer Society is involved in. That's a key, a key focus area. It is. It is a, a, a key area. Um, a lot of my time has been actually working in that um, prevention area of, of helping in, uh, decrease 
HPV related cancers was very exciting news just about three weeks ago, the American Cancer Society changed their guidelines to HPV, which is um, for vaccination to start vaccinating boys and girls as early as nine years old, um, which is very, very exciting. I'm actually got, I'm on a national project right now with Mercy One um, to help work to increase the HPV rates with Mercy One. And this, this is, I always want to say with the work with HPV, it's a two vaccination series. You can get your children, boys and girls vaccinated at age nine, nine to, we want to get them vaccinated by the age of 13, but it's two shots, six months apart, and it prevents nine types of cancer. It is safe, it's well studied, and um, it's a it's it's just it's it's a such an important vaccination to get our kids and youth vaccinated so that they never have to be told that they have any type of cervical cancer, head, neck, and throat cancer, um, and all of these other quite horrendous cancers that are related to HPV. And I I do I do appreciate um, our healthcare systems and cancer centers because they realize that it's a preventable cancer and their clinics and their pediatric doctors and their um, primary care physicians are very, very committed to, to getting those vaccination rates up higher so that we can prevent cancers. You mentioned um, when you were talking about the Hope Lodge, the 30 of them that exist, that the, there's, they're already working in Dallas and in Oklahoma City. Are there other things that sort of after the pandemic, maybe that, uh, that the American Cancer Society has been working on that you see as sort of front, uh, front edge, if you will, uh, advances that, that the, your organization is focused on? Thank you for asking that, Chris. And I think the one area that we've tried to, or are going to be focusing on more is actually um, that tr the, a real focus is the um, road to recovery and being able to even perfect that matchup for drivers to patients in a safe environment um, to get them to their appointments. We realize that transportation is a huge issue and we are looking at different grant opportunities and projects that we can partner with our healthcare systems to really help in that critical area. Mm -hmm. um, access to care is a huge, huge issue. Um, yeah, that's been one of the things in the two years I've been in my position with Above and Beyond Cancer that, you know, it, as you said, it doesn't matter how great the care is if they can't get there or uh, they don't have access to a place to stay or a meal that the evening before no. their treatment or um, those are, so there's, significant barriers and, and most of us don't think too much about them, unfortunately. It is, it is a huge barrier. And especially in some of these areas that are, well, Iowa and a lot of areas are very rural. If you don't have a car, you don't have, you know, there are people that just don't have anyone that they can call and, and get a ride. Um, and so then some people, they choose not to get treatment. So I would say that that would be the area and also how we can continue to partner because transportation and access to care, no one group is going to solve that problem. Right. It, is, it, it, is a, it is a complex problem. And I always say it's like a big piece of a pie and we're gonna be one piece, but trying to convene groups together so that we can fill in the gaps and provide that, that critical service to get people to their treatments. Yeah. Well, this has been very informative. Lady, I well, really thank appreciate you. your time and your lending us your expertise this evening. And um, I know that this will be recorded as we talked about earlier on, and it will be on our YouTube channel for people to see after this. If there was something that you might've missed early or you joined us late, um, you're, you're welcome to, as uh, starting tomorrow, I guess, uh, go back and, and catch this live or recorded and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll have all of our cancer education series uh, since we started this uh, Zoom uh, back in the, when the pandemic moved us uh, away from having them 
uh, live and, and in person. So thank you. And yeah. anyone who's listening that is always welcome to email or call me because that's what we're here for to help answer questions and connect people and and um, support cancer patients, survivors and their caregivers. So thank you. Yeah, well, we appreciate your time. And, and I said, as I said, I, I learned a lot. And I'm sure our audience members did as well. So Lady, thanks so much and keep thank up the you. good work. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Right, take care.